How do? My name is Andrew Hancock and I am a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with VMware since their birth in 1998. So that's been a quarter of a century now I've been working with the VMware product catalog. Some of my close friends say if you cut Andy in half it reads VMware like a stick of rock from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I have now written over 130 articles and recorded over 30 hours of VMware vSphere 7 and 8 videos for Experts Exchange and received 40 Expert Exchange awards over the last 11 years working with the Expert Exchange community. I am currently the overall number one point earner in the Hall of Fame. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert program since 2011 and I'm currently a VMware vExpert Pro for the last four years. And welcome back to another Hancock's VMware half hour. Now I did say in the last video that I did on ESXi ARM Fling 1.15 that that was going to be the last video for 2023. But I felt so, so guilty that I hadn't reached my goal to cover a backup product for VMware vSphere 8.0 U2 that I felt compelled to come back for one last more. So in today's video, in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to look at Venbu's BDR suite. Now, I could have chosen a product out of 20 to 30 different third-party backup products that are available for VMware vSphere. And I think everybody knows if you were to ask somebody, mention or recommend a backup product for VMware, I think the answer is probably going to be Veeam. Um, and Veeam is probably the best backup application in the world, but it might be a lot of bells and whistles beyond your budget. Um, so let's have a little look at something that's not often recommended. Um, Venbu's BDR suite. Now, I will actually say that if you are considering a backup product, all of them, all the backup products on the market today offer 30 to 60 day trials. So please download the backup product, trial it in your organization uh, against a checklist of what you need in your organization. Um, if you like the interface, if you actually get on with the product, but more importantly, check that you can restore. Um, a backup isn't a backup unless you can restore from it. And I've met many clients and I've asked them if they got backups and very few ever test them. And when the doo-doo hits the fan, they then start to struggle restoring backups. Um, so they can actually basically restore and get back into production. Well, I've had a number of issues here, uh, only in the lab with vSAN, but even in the home lab, I use a backup application uh, to backup and restore uh, my data and backup and restore my virtual machines when they disappear. Um, so I've never used BDR Suite. I've heard of the product. Um, but I've never used it. I've never installed it. So let's see if it does what it says on the tin. So um, I've got an RDP session into a Windows Server 2022. It also happens to be the same server that's currently running PRTG, which I've done a previous video on. Um, I've already downloaded the BDR suite uh, and I'll put this link in the in the description for you to follow. So if I have a little look at my downloads, I should find that I've got this very large um, 1.2 gigabyte download. So I'm just going to follow the prompts. Um, I'm hoping that nothing is going to catch me out. This is going to work absolutely perfectly. And we'll do a backup and restore. Uh, we'll make some changes on a virtual machine. 
um, and then we'll delete it um, and uh, then we'll restore and we'll see whether or not those changes have been captured correctly. Uh, now I did have a sneak, I did double click this last night when I was looking at the application uh, and I thought shall I go ahead in advance and install and see if anything trips me up and then I thought nah I'll cancel. Anyway whilst I'm waiting for that I'm just going to drink out of my Experts Exchange number one or first the original tech community established in 1996. I have actually reduced the level of espressos that I've been drinking because I was drinking far too much. OK, um, I would have thought that it would have popped up by now and done something. Oh, OK, as as if by magic. Um, now, the BDR suite, um, I love that graphic, actually. I think that's quite tells you exactly on the tin what it can do. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to go forward and I'm just going to accept these uh program files yeah i'm happy with that okay so there's an awful lot of select all recommended well i don't really i'm not bothered about hyper-v or disk or linux or mac or kvm delegation service i don't even know what that is sas applications no cloud workloads no i'm not interested in any of that I'm not interested in that all i want to do is back up a back up and restore a VMware virtual machine. Oh, I almost forgot. Here we go. I've done a little addendum for my hat. Um, VMware by Broadcom. I would stick it on, but like, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to see. But anyway, so VMware by Broadcom. Right, OK. So I'm just going to basically just blindly go through this. Um, OK, we can choose and install BDR backup server in a cluster deployment. I assume that's a failover clustering for, for Windows. Stand, so I'm going to do a standard installation. I'm going to click next. Uh, total size of the disk, 119 gig, free size. OK. Yeah, we'll do next. Um, admin, admin, 6060. That doesn't seem to clash with PRT, so I'm just going to click install. Now, if this is a 1.2 gig download then again it had all that other stuff um that we're not going to use um so this actually might might quickly but i'll tell you what i'm going to do um can't move that now um i'm going to come back speed all this up in post as usual and i'm going to come back and uh have a little look um at running the application because I'm not quite sure how long this is going to is going to take, so I will uh, I'll come back uh, shortly. And I'm back. OK, that was a lot longer than I expected. And I don't know why. Uh, maybe it didn't just look to me that it was actually installing all the stuff that I didn't want. And I'm sure that I deselected it. Um, there was also a lot of Python modules, libraries, uh, a lot of JS, a lot of Java, Apache. Um, so this is obviously a webby type application, I'm guessing. Um, OK, so let's just click finish and um, that's going to exit the setup program and that's going to load the OK. Um, so it's actually filled in admin admin. So it, it you know, maybe it did. Despite the fact that I said don't want them, it installed them. Um, anyway, so. To use that phrase, um, it does look like that it's a uh, Swiss Army knife of backup products here. So your trial will expire in 30 days. OK, I don't need to register. Um, 
so I'm just going to, I assume that I go to uh, data source, um, add ESXi vCenter server. Okay, so I'm just going to click add. I'm going to type in vCenter 8A, Cyrus Dash Consultants, FQDNs, remember? Select credentials. Um, oh, okay, so we... We add credentials a bit like that we do um, in in Veeam into a credential store that you can select if you would not use Veeam, very similar. So like the password. But you could use a different password. Uh, never. So add credentials, save. Um, would have been nice if there was a test button there. Um, I do like that in some applications that you can you can test. Okay, so it's obviously gone off. It's got a little VM there telling us that it's um, uh, VMware by Broadcom. Um, total of VMs ten, so it's it's got that right. Um, so it's obviously. So obviously um, added that as a data source. So now let's go to backup. Um, so we're just going to go backup, configure backup, um, VMware vSphere, uh, create a job without a template. Uh, okay, so we'll create a job and you'll just say first test backup. Uh, Block storage, default repo, default repo. Just looking to see if um, there's an option somewhere. Add block storage repository. Just looking, oh, okay. Repository name, repository type, scale out, disk rotation, set, backup location. Okay, so this is actually going to store it local disk look to this virtual machine, so on this virtual machine. Um, okay, seems, um, so we'll say default, and we'll do uh, next select VMs to back up. So we're just going to open. So let's back up um, our Windows 11 VM. Next. Um, okay, well, that's where we would exclude disks, guest processing. Um, this is where we actually do VSS syncing within the host uh, or quiescing. Um, so that we've got a consistent backup. So I don't need to, I don't want to do any of that. Uh, scheduling, uh, enabled VM quiescing. Next. Um, okay, I just do want to do a one time backup. I don't really want to do a schedule. There's got manual. There we go. Or, or one time. There we go. The one time, one time backup. Um, next settings. Uh, don't want to do any retention. Next. Don't want to do any encryption. Next. Um, next review. Uh, save. Oh, okay. So you so similar to Veeam, you can effectively turn around and say, save. Run this backup job immediately after saving. Uh, save. And that's obviously going to get stuffed into a, a queue. And this is obviously it here. So this server, next schedule, not yet scheduled. So that's pause, click to schedule, edit, view backup job. We'll probably have to 
wait for the backup to, to run. And again, I'll speed this up in post because like, you know, we're about 23 minutes already and all we've really done is just install. Um, do I have to, I thought maybe I'd actually said after click save, run this backup. Um, Oh, there we go. It's in progress. So something has changed. Ah, okay. So it's it's doing its stuff. Um, let's have a little look at vCenter server. Um, I'm just going to go back and have a little look. Okay, so I'm just, just looking here that obviously it did a snapshot, did another snapshot reconfigure the virtual machine so i think this probably works in a very very similar way um has it added the machine disk to the virtual machine to do sort of a hot add sort of conic copy which is what a a lot of edit settings which is what a lot of the um the backup applications do Seem to have seem to have got that bit of stickiness again, which is what I mentioned to you before with this vCenter server that just seems to want a little bit more resources because it's just a bit sticky, a bit slow. I was hoping that I might be able to see another virtual machine disconnected. It's it's just busy. Let's just have a little look at that backup. what all this is right, there we go okay so a backup is in progress so it says um, two minutes and 40 seconds zero percent um, so I'll um I'll come back and speed this up in post and we'll have a little look when we've got a backup. experimenting um, with our BDR suite uh, by Venbu. Um, as you can see here, um, this is the first test backup um, that we started. Um, that was over 48 hours ago now. Um, and we've been uh, running this backup since and we backed up Observium and we did a second backup. And then for shits and giggles, I actually basically thought, I know what, let's back up all the VMs in this lab and um, we'll back them up to a um, Windows share um, on a NAS as well. Um, just because we were actually basically running out of space on the virtual machine that we installed BDR Suite on. Um, but also it's a good idea really that if you're actually backing up your virtual environment that you actually basically put the backups on another data store or another server or another NAS which is not located on the same platform that your virtual machines are hosted on. Because in the event of total failure, um, the servers blow up, catch fire, and you completely lose that site. Um, if you've actually basically got another NAS or a server that you're actually basically using to store your backups on, then at least you've got your backups and you're ready to hit DR and business continuity, and you can actually basically start um, restoring uh, your machines. Um, so in this, what I actually said I was going to do, I was going to be my head around the product. Um, it is uh, web GUI based. Personally, for me, I'm not really a fan of the whole web GUI things. I'm a bit old fashioned and I like applications. Um, one of the things I've um, actually noticed, and I'll show you the 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 vSphere panel here uh, our single pane of glass 
you may actually notice that these little exclamation marks have started to appear uh, on Observium here and on Runecast Analyzer. And if we actually basically just have a little look in detail, it actually basically is telling us that the virtual machine consolidation um, is needed. Um, now that should be a warning for you really immediately um, to actually basically have a little look to see whether or not that have you got any have you got any snapshots present. Um, now I'm not going to not going to go into a great deal about snapshots because I have actually written an article on snapshots. Um, and if we do the same here, you can also see consolidation is required. You can actually see that there is a snap there, a snapshot uh, called SGS snap. Now these are only appearing um, after um, the product in use BDR suite. Now I, I wouldn't get overly alarmed really by, I, I, I've seen some people write, um, I'm gonna go off and buy a different product or use a different product because it's causing snapshots on my virtual machines. Um, all third-party backup applications use the snapshot mechanism to back up your virtual machines. Um, you need to ha investigate further as to why um, the backup application is actually leaving your virtual machines running on snapshots. And you really should have, you really should be looking at your virtual machines after every backup to see that they're not running on snapshots. Uh, now it's interesting in this particular case when we look at snapshots here, um, it actually basically turns around and shows us a, a snap is present, snapshots present. But if we actually look at this one here, it doesn't actually basically show us any snapshots are present. And again, I've seen this posted on Experts Exchange where people basically turn around and said, um, it's telling me that consolidation is needed, but I've looked and there's no snapshots. Um, really, the, the proper way really to be able to look to see whether or not your virtual machine is running on a snapshot or not is to actually inspect the hard disk that the virtual machine is running on. And if you actually see something like this, um, you, a virtual machine disk dash quadruple zero 043, then that's 43 snapshots that have been applied to that virtual machine. Something is, something is very, 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 very wrong um, with the backup on that virtual machine. And sometimes it can just be that your underlying storage for where your virtual machine is stored is too slow. Now, this is a uh, home lab here. It's used to demonstrate uh, and write articles and complete videos. Um, it's not been uh, put together as a production uh, environment. But I am still surprised to see um, that we are getting um, these levels of, of snapshots. And we can do exactly the same with the Runecast Analyzer one. And I'm digressing a bit, really, because this actually started off in third-party backups with the BDR suite and Venbu, and now we're, we're, we're going off down the dark side now, and we're dealing, um, you know, we're dealing with... Um, you know, so, um, you know, they, they are a bane of my life, they really are. But th this is how I, I deal with them. Um, so I like to take a new snapshot... Um, Wait about 120 seconds uh, for the virtual machine to stabilize. Now, in this particular case, Roomcast is actually off, so it does surprise me that there's a snapshot that exists there. Um, and you can see that that's a snapshot that I've created. So I'm gonna do exactly the same here. We're gonna take another snapshot, um, and we're gonna go create, and we're gonna wait 120 seconds um, for that to stabilize. And then what we're gonna do then, we're gonna hit the delete all. And that snapshot that we've created there, uh, hopefully, um, if the chain's intact, because snapshots exist as a chain, so you will find if we look into, well, I'll tell you what we'll do, um, as this is actually basically disappearing into a bit of a, a bit of a, a snapshot, um, snapshot discussion, why not let's have a little look. So if I actually basically have a little look at Observium, uh, then can you see all those individual files there? Zero, zero, one, two, three, four. Those are all individual snapshots that have actually basically happened by the backup application um, up to, I think it was 44, 43. So this is the snapshot that we've created. So that will be chained off 43, 42. Now it's interesting because theoretically, VMware tells us that you can't keep more, you can't create more than I think 32 snapshot is the maximum. 
um, which to be honest Steve is not quite correct because I've actually seen a lot more than that. Um, but snapshots really are a living hell and I will actually basically put the article I've written about snapshots which basically was about 10 years old but that article although it's 10 years old is still completely uh, relevant today. Um, a virtual machine running on a snapshot will be slow. Performance of it will be slow and the more snapshots that you've got the slower it will be. Uh, so over a minute and 30 seconds, so I've done me uh, 120 seconds or a minute or so. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to disappear back um, to the virtual machine. And I'm actually basically going to go to snapshots again. Um, and I'm going to actually basically say delete all snapshots. Now, you may notice that I'm not using the consolidate option. The consolidate option really was something that was implemented by VMware to make managing snapshots easier. Um, I actually think really it's better if you actually understand that your virtual machine is running on a snapshot and what to actually do about it if you do find that your virtual machine is running on a snapshot. Now it's still telling us there that it needs consolidating. Um, so it may or may not have worked. So let's just basically have a little look again. I'm going to do edit. I'm going to look at, look at hard disk and we're still running on. We're still, we've got 41 snapshots there and we've got another snapshot there now it's possible of course that the backup job is actually running at the moment and that's why it's actually creating a snapshot so let's have a little look and go back clearly there are no backup jobs running at the moment um, if there was a backup job running um, then i would expect to see these virtual machines so um, another test is again have a little look at the the number so this is 41 snapshot 41 41 and that's also probably maybe going to be 41 as well okay now create a create another snapshot because what we did before should have removed all those snapshots but it didn't and what we're actually basically trying to see is whether or not that has it incremented and is it incrementing um, and creating another snapshot um, so we're going to do exactly the same thing again. We're going to go to uh, manage our snapshots and we're going to say delete all. And down here, it's said very, very quickly, remove all snapshots. Snapshots of there have now disappeared, but has, I'm just going to go back to the summary. It's still telling us that machine color that consolidation is required. So I'm going to have a little look in the edit settings and have we incremented? Yeah, we've gone 42. Now, that's actually basically telling me that the snapshot deletion process, for whatever reason, can't get a lock on the parent disk. And it makes me wonder whether or not that the Roomcaster Analyzer virtual machine disks are still added and part of our Windows Server 2022. So quite quick, all we can do, we can have a little look at the settings um, on our Windows Server 2022 and have a little look. So that's our Server 2022, which also has a snapshot on it as well. Um, hard Disk 2, Observium, okay. And Hard Disk 3, Roomcast. So what we want to do, that so the fact that the backup appliance or the backup server, um, which is using hot add uh, to snapshot the virtual machines in the backup list, it then basically adds the parent disk to itself. And then it basically uses quick copy or backup copy or whatever mechanism to copy the data off that disk. And when basically it's finished, uh, it then should remove the parent disk from itself. So all I'm going to do here, and this is completely safe because this is a hot plug hard disk is say remove device not remove device and data we don't want to delete the virtual disk we just want to remove the hard disk from the inventory so i'm going to click remove um, so that's hard disk has been removed and i'm going to do exactly the same with observium because the same problem is occurring there as well so i'm going to go remove device and i'm going to click ok and now we've got an invalid configuration for device zero. You know, oh, we are in the, we are in the doo-doo here. You know, 
Um, just, I'm just going to have to pause this a minute. OK, now I think what's actually basically happening here is that since, um, <laughs> since those virtual machine disks have been added to this virtual machine disk, it's been snapshotted. So we have to deal with the snapshot first. Uh, so let's have a little look at the snapshot on here. Yeah, we've got a snapshot here. So I'm going to say delete all, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create another snapshot. I don't want to include the virtual machine's memory, so I'm just going to create another snap. And I'm going to say delete all. So I'm going to say delete all. And hopefully it will deal with the snapshots that are currently all on this virtual machine object and remove them all. And the fact that it's showing me, you know, that sort of dialogue suggests to me that it is actually doing something. So I'm going to have a little look at edit again. I'm going to have a little look at the parent disk for this virtual machine. And you can see there now we've got no dash 001 or anything. So that's actually basically running on its parent disk. Now, hopefully we can now, because if you've got a snapshot on a virtual machine, you cannot remove hot plug disks and you cannot increase the size of them or reduce the size of them either. Um, so I'm going to go back. And in fact, actually, what's happened there, very, very odd. The snapshot now's gone. This is a real, they could be, let's just have a little look. So I'm going I'm to remove the device. I'm going to remove the device. OK, so they're gone. So our Windows Server 2022 um, is OK. There's no snapshot running remaining on that. Uh, yeah, no snapshot remaining on that. And the virtual disks for um, Observium and Runecast, they've been moved, removed correctly as well. Um, so, interestingly, because I think now when I actually have a little look of these disks, so 42, 42, 42. So we're going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to take a snapshot. And I'm going to go to this machine and I'm going to create another snapshot. I'm going to wait the sort of kind of 120 seconds just for things to stabilize. Um, but hopefully this time when we actually basically do the delete all because the parent disk doesn't have a lock on it because it's not associated with another virtual machine, we'll be able to get rid of all those snapshots. So I'm going to click delete all. And this time I'm probably going to expect it to take a little bit longer. Although that actually basically says it's completed. Um, and that's just say delete all. OK, so it is taking a little bit longer this one to do something with it. Now, you know, snapshots, depending upon how long you've been running on a snapshot, and you shouldn't really be running on a snapshot for any longer than, than three days maximum, worst case. Um, as I said, if you run on a snapshot, performance of your virtual machine will be poor. Um, so depending on how long your snapshot, um, how long your virtual machine has been running on the snapshot, how busy the virtual machine is, how many transactions are going through that virtual machine, um, will depend on its size. Um, if you've got a very small snapshot and you click delete all, like you've seen here, they'll disappear very quickly. However, if you've got a um, large snapshot, you, you can be waiting minutes, seconds, minutes, hours, or sometimes days for it to complete. But don't panic. Be patient. Don't sit there watching it. Um, go and get a cup of coffee or a beer or a cup of tea. Uh, go and get a burger or something or other. It will complete if you give it time. But please don't mess with the server. Don't restart the server. Don't restart the virtual machine. Don't stop the services. Don't. Um, you know, so, you know, don't meddle. Um, it will complete. Just keep the faith and be patient. It will get there in the end. Um, 
There are some ways of dealing with snapshots if you get into snapshot hell uh, that we can use. Um, best thing to do really if you're panicking and you've got a snapshot and you don't know what to do is to basically post a question on Experts Exchange and we'll pick it up and we'll work through with you in the best way. Okay, so our consolidation um, warnings have disappeared. So let's have a little look at our data saw. Uh, let's have a little room cast analyzer on our data saw to be to be absolutely okay. I don't see any snapshot delta files there, so that's good. And I'm going to have a look on our observium, and I don't have any there either, and I don't have any there either. Okay, so, you know, we've diversified there. We've gone off and we started talking about snapshots. And as I said, you know, snapshots, um, they are... Um, so, um, you know, best, best avoided. But that's quickly how you actually basically get, get, get rid of them. And again, don't blame it on the product. It's not the product. Um, it's underlying data store. Uh, but you can, you can fix these things. Anyway, so we digressed a bit there. We went off on a tangent and um, I've been meaning to do a snapshot discussion really for a long time now. And I did wonder whether or not this was going to come up when I was looking at some of the virtual machines we were backing up and they were getting snapshots. And I was going to deal with them and I thought, no, 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 no. I know what. Well, incorporate it into the video. Uh, I think the video was already about 30 minutes long anyway. So we'll try and speed all that up in post. Um, and this has been going on for about 18 minutes or so now. Um, so what I actually really wanted to show you is that, yes, this has been backing up quite nicely. Um, but what really what I actually wanted to do was, um, as I said to you before, that a backup is not a backup really unless it's in three places, stored in three places, and you've actually restored it. That's the proof is in the pudding. If you can't actually basically restore with the product, um, something's not working correctly and you don't have backups you know the number of people i speak to and they say oh yes we've got backups and they try to restore them and they don't work and i said well they're not backups then are they um so um let's start our observium um because what i'm going to do um i'm going to start observium up i'm going to log in uh, i'm just going to create a folder and i'm going to touch a file in it because it's a linux file system uh, I'm going to back it up again, and then I'm going to restore it uh, to actually basically prove that um, it's actually captured that change. Um, and we've had a little bit of change here in the lab as well, which is why it's also sort of kind of taking me 48 hours because uh, I had to move some uh, had to move some data around across some NASes uh, and move some of the the virtual machines here onto to NASes uh, uh, as well. So let's just launch a, a web console. I'm not going to do an SSH thing. Uh, it would help if I actually basically got the... Um, this, interestingly, this keyboard I'm using oh, doesn't have... Try again. This keyboard I'm using doesn't actually basically have a caps lock. Why? This is just nonsense. Ah, there we go. It's a button that's... Oh. Right, I'll get there in a minute. Right. Ah, that's what I wanted. What, what is going on here? Right, okay. Abandon that. I'm going to do SSH. <laughs> Butty. And uh, I think the IP address is one of three. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to log in via Putty, hopefully. And um, OK, so logged in via Putty. Uh, I'm in the home directory, so e test. E test. Touch uh, test file. 
Okay, uh, so I'm going to bob back uh, into my going to bob back to my panel, uh, and uh, let's configure another backup. Uh, so uh, I'll do third backup. Um, we're going to use the network repo that I've um, I've created, and done an error now. Unable to sign into the PRD backup server. Please make sure workload service is running and try again. Let's have a little look in services. Maybe there is a, a service that's not working there. I don't know if that's the one. Oh, it is. Yeah, that is the service. Let's try again then. Select. Right. Let's cancel and try again. Configure backup, vSphere. Third backup. Network repo. Unable to sign in, please make sure BDR suite backup server virtual physical workload service is running and try again. That's interesting. The um, the uh, the service looks like it's um, starting and falling over. Okay, just one moment. This doesn't heed well, does it? Okay, so I bounced the server, uh, rebooted it, and um, all seems to be better. That particular service is not falling over anymore. And um, I log back in, and um, I immediately notice that the second backup is running, the all VMs is backup is running, and then I've actually basically created the third backup um, to backup the Zervium, and I've actually basically cancelled these other two as well. Um, so all we can do is wait for the third backup to capture those changes, and um, then I'll come back and I'll basically do a restore, and we'll have a little look at the results. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, well, we're now four days away uh, from Christmas. It's the 21st of December, 2023. And um, for the last four days, I've been experimenting with the BDR suite uh, from Vembu. Um, and the third backup of our virtual server, Observium, has now been completed. Uh, 25 gig, compressed state 25 gig. That's because I've been experimenting in... Um, turning on and off uh, compression. Um, so now it's our time to test a restore. And as I mentioned to you previously, if you're not restoring and testing your backups, then we can't really call them backups. So I'm just going to click um, restore and I'm going to follow the prompts. Um, this um, does seem to offer um, the similar sort of functionality to what Veeam Backup and Recovery um first created um in they call it instant boot uh, vm um that actually basically boots uh the vm from your backup files by presenting an nfs data store to your esxi servers um so you don't have to re recover or restore your virtual machines um should you should you lose them so i'm just going to basically uh click a standard uh, full VM recovery. Okay, so I'm going to click the Observium, and I could do an instant boot VM, but I don't want to do an instant boot, boot VM. I actually want to do a full VM recovery. So I'm going to click full VM recovery, and I'm going to click next. Um, I'm going to select that timestamp, which has been incremental. Um, so hopefully that should capture the changes that we made. Uh, in our home directory, uh, we'll be creating a little test file. 
So I'm going to basically click next. Um, it's going to show me observe in one disk, uh, select the target server. Uh, so I'm going to say what well, we want to do the source ESXi server and vCenter server. Um, Observium, one disk, vCenter server. It's already picked the target data source and it's also auto named the, the VM, um, which is actually something that VM doesn't VM. It's something that Veeam and backup from replication doesn't do. Um, you've actually got to remember to click um, add a suffix or a suffix or prefix. Um, so that's a nice touch. Um, for those that us, us, for those of us which forget, so I'm going to click next. Uh, I'm just going to confirm Observium restore point selected one disk target server NFS data store Observium one, and I'm going to click restore. I'm going to click OK to proceed, and I'm going to wait for our OK. So it's telling us that the restore has started successfully. Um, and we've got a restore in progress. Um, so I'm going to um, I'm going to bob off. As is fashioned in these videos, I'm going to bob off. I'm going to disappear. Uh, speed up this in post, and we'll have a little look at our restore VM. Uh, and more importantly, we want to check to see whether or not that we've actually basically got that update that it's actually basically been captured, but we made changes to the virtual machine. Um, just people disappear. You know, I remember a long time ago, and it was a long time ago, it was about 20 years ago, um, that we were backing up virtual machines and we were restoring them, we were testing them, and and, um, and they weren't working. Um, they weren't working. They happened to be Windows machines at the time, um, and for some strange reason, they just weren't booting properly. Uh, they have no idea um, what the problem was. Um, you know, that wasn't Veeam. That was a product called, that was a product by... Um, that was a product called Vision Core, uh, Ranger Pro. Um, and um, yeah, it was just, just for a few weeks, for some strange reason, the backups were being captured. Um, so again, I think the point is that I think you realistically should be looking at your backup logs uh, to actually check that backups are running as scheduled. Um, and you periodically... Um, check your backups can be recovered. Um, don't fall into this fail-safe belief of um, set it and forget it. And um, when you do need to restore, um, you find, one, you've been missing out particular virtual machines and backup runs, um, or when you restore them, they're not capturing the information that you think they are, and they're absolutely useless because then they're not really backups for your organization. Um, and I know all that takes a little bit of time because, you know, I even do it here myself. You know, I have regular backups running um, in uh, the home labs and I get tons of emails coming in every evening telling me that this has been backed up and that has been backed up. And what do I do with them? I either delete them or I just create a rule to move them out of the way. Um, uh, but I do uh, weekly pick random vms uh to check um that they are actually backups and they're working uh correctly anyway so we'll let this restore um complete we'll have a little look at in the inventory and then we'll uh, come back we'll check to see whether or not it boots check that it's captured those files uh and then we will then we will summarize so i'll be back shortly okay so it would appear that our restore has finished uh, Observium was the VM name managed by this server. Uh, the target was vCenter 8A. The target VM was Observium underscore one. Start time, end time, six minutes and 28 seconds. Success. Um, it does actually have a remark about an error message. Um, 102114 terminated unexpectedly when this was store was in progress. Um, but it does say success. A little bit confused by that. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so I'm going to have a look at the inventory. Okay, so it's three days until the big day. Um, so I wanted to come back and wrap up um, this demonstration of Venbu's BDR suite. And we have successfully restored our virtual machine. 
Um, when I say successfully restored, we've restored it. Um, it's only a successful restore if we can demonstrate that the virtual machine boots, we've got no corruption, and of course, it's actually picked up those changes that we made in the virtual machine. So this is our original Observium running on 192.168.182.103, which is, which is here. Um, so I'm just going to start up our restored virtual machine. Now, this isn't a Windows machine. It's not domain joined. Um, the restoration has created a new MAC address, 91C03E, which is different to the MAC address, and 9146E4. So this is actually going to get a different IP address from DHCP. If, of course, you had static IP address allocation within the virtual machine, you would need to disconnect the network interface uh, to check it, <clears throat> or the machine that you're restoring would be, be dead and off anyway. So I've got no issues here with, with conflicts. And hopefully, um, within a matter of seconds, when it's picked up its IP address, it will appear here. Um, then I'm just basically going to go to its web address and see whether or not the Observium um, loads. Um, and that is very important because this particular virtual machine, this Linux virtual machine, is running Observium. It's running its own database, uh, which is MySQL, which can often get corrupted um, with backups and restores in that they've not been captured correctly or they've not been quest quiesced correctly. Um, so I'm just going to basically do a refresh. I would have thought by now, but I'm just actually going to check that I have actually connected the network interface. Um, so, yeah, as I was saying, so I'm just going to connect that network interface. And you can see there that the virtual machine was actually basically pausing and waiting for the DHCP. Um, so that should now uh, complete. Uh, that's actually moved on. So just waiting for this. It has VMware tools installed. So when they wake up, and the center server wakes up. Um, hopefully, there we go. 192.182.120. Um, let's just copy that. To a new browser window. Tab. Okay, so that's got a good sign that the Observium dashboard is actually basically responding. Um, so what I'm now going to do, um, I'm going to open up a, I'm going to collect a putty session. Ah, who, who knew that that was going to be 192.168.182.120? Mystery. Okay, so I'm going to log in with putty, and uh, I wanted to show you the folder that I created. So there's our folder, ee-test. And there's our test file that we touched previously. So a successful backup and a successful restore. Uh, the moral here really is please test your backup. And moving on, um, this is just a demonstration of one particular um, backup product that backs up virtual machines um, on VMware vSphere and others. There are plenty more third-party backup applications available for VMware vSphere. Uh, don't just think for one moment that because I am showing one backup product out of many that I'm specifically endorsing this particular product. I would encourage you to draft, if you, if you are looking for a backup product for VMware vSphere, the first thing you need to do before downloading any evaluations is create a checklist on paper of your requirements. And then take those out to market, download the evaluation versions of all the products that exist. If the evaluation period that is um, available 30 days or 45 days or 60 days is not long enough for you to complete your evaluation, then please go back to the vendor and ask them to extend it. Um, they will more than welcome you um, to extend your evaluation period of the application. And they will work with you as well if you want them to. 
to work with your um, evaluation period. So again, as I said, there are many different products. This is just one, and I just actually basically wanted to show you um, Vembu um, BDR Suite. And in this particular video, we've looked at the installation, which was quite a long time, 15 minutes, and I'll speed that up in post. Um, we've basically done some backups of virtual machines. I backed up virtual machines to local repository. I backed up virtual machines to a NAS. Uh, we obviously basically got into a little bit of a snapshot hell. Um, so basically I demonstrated how we actually basically work with snapshots and how we remove snapshots, which took quite a long time. Um, and finally, um, we restored a virtual machine and we proved that it restored it successfully. So there's really one thing for me to say, and that's Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, or Happy Hanukkah. Um, I'll be back in the new year in 2024. Um, a healthy and prosperous new year to you all. And um, I love doing these videos. Uh, if you want me to do a particular video, um, then please reach out to me, let me know, put a comment in the description. So that's it really for 2023. Um, so. Thanks very much and goodbye.